Welcome to another video and I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Harvey Newman and I've been in games, animation, a games developer for quite a lot of years, two decades now. And I have done a few videos here in the channel about AI and animation over the last couple of years or so. And there was a comment a few days ago by Sephiro that asked for an update on the state of AI. Because according to him, AI is now more than just interpolating poses and things are much further ahead than when I made the video about a year ago, right? And I think Sephiro is right. And this is what sparked the update for this video because I do have strong thoughts and I was debating about making another video, especially after seeing the ads last year during Christmas, because there is something to be said about more and more companies using AI to create animation. And obviously it hurts a little bit, right? Because when you see companies like Coca-Cola that have so much money and they want to save money by creating ads with AI, which is something that historically they haven't really done. And they have invested in ads that are the utmost quality, especially around Christmas. It feels a little bit like we are turning a page on what is artistic and what is AI. And this Christmas, we saw Coca-Cola doing their main Coca-Cola Christmas ad as an AI video ad. And I think a lot of you that are watching this video probably have watched this Coca-Cola ad, if not, a lot some B-roll while I'm talking about this. But the reason why to me and to a lot of people, this is a big deal is because Coca-Cola pretty much created Christmas. The idea of Santa Claus is Christmas being that color red and white all the trucks coming down the road and all the ads that they created over years, it was all to do with Coca-Cola basically being marketing geniuses and getting people to feel good during Christmas so they can actually sell more Coke. Now, when you look at it from that perspective and you look at some of the historical ads that they have made over the years, having it as AI immediately kind of like, you know, got everybody talking about it, about, you know, what is good, what is bad, how far are we going to take it? And does it feel personal? Does it feel the same way? Another company that I can compare Coca-Cola with here in the UK is a company called John Lewis. And for all of those across the pond in the US that are not John Lewis, it's a big department store that basically sells goods that are quite expensive. But John Lewis every year makes sure that they actually create an ad for Christmas. And just a few years ago, they actually collaborated with a few animators, including Aaron Blaze, which is another YouTuber, ex-Disney animator, absolute legend, super talented. And they made a whole animation with a bear and a rabbit, I believe. And this animation was amazing. And it had so much soul and it had so much personality to it that everybody was talking about this ad as in like, have you seen the latest John Lewis ad? It was amazing. But that kind of got me thinking about what makes really something amazing because if the Coca-Cola ad being AI is not amazing, but the old ones are amazing, then what's the difference between them, right? And I'm starting to think that to me, what bothers me, because I think AI is a good tool, I'm not here to bash AI in any ways, is the humanity of it all. And I'll get more into it a little later in this video. Now, the second thing that I've seen as well that I wanted to kind of express in this video is Sora AI, which is this new tool by OpenAI that basically wants to kind of like establish themselves as the animation version, like ChatGPT is all about text. And then they have DAL-E, which is basically their image generator. And then you have text and images, but obviously there's something in between there that's animation and that's missing. And Sora AI, I believe, is like looking to fill that void that basically animators or people that want to see things animated is, are looking to, to do, to actually create, right? So I saw that, you know, once again, I got a little nervous and then filled it on a 12 day Christmas thing that they were doing that every day they would release something new. And I watched the Sora AI event, I watched it live, and then I saw that the tools and they even have this blending tool that to me as an animator, I can see it as like almost like two frames kind of being put together by AI. And it kind of threw alarms in my, the back of my head. I'm like, wait a minute, what is this? This is, are they trying to actually kind of create frames and animations and are we trying to blend things and all that stuff? They even had a little tangent that looked a little bit like the graph editor with a line and some tangents and you can move the tangents and get that easing and ease out and things like that. 
And yeah, it felt a little bit weird to see that from AI. But then the more I looked at it, the more I started to realize certain things. Uh, the first thing is that we are blending two images together. Second thing is that everything realistic works better. Marquez Brownlee has a really good video on this that you guys should check out. I'll link it down below where he looks at a tool initially and he's very impressed. And then towards the end, you can see all of the holes and all of the stuff that is like slightly disjointed and feels surreal and doesn't feel quite right. And this is kind of how I see things happening at this point. I feel like if it's realistic, it might work a little better. Anything stylized doesn't work so well. This is the, the same conclusion that Marquez has got. And I do think that the more you ask of it, the less good results you get. So you have to keep it as simple as possible to get good results from this tool. And I do know the tool is young, AI is moving incredibly quickly, and we are going to get better results in a year's time, two years time, etc., etc. But at this point in time, I think we are asking too much of the tool like this that basically blends two things together. And if you think about animation, just having a blend between two poses is the minimum thing that you can do in animation. And I think there's a long way for you to actually get to a point where you can actually have something artistic coming out of AI. Because if you think about Maya, a few years ago, I made a video about Maya, the software that we use for animation, being the worst in-betweener ever. Now, to break down things further for those that are not animators, in-betweeners are basically what the Nine Old Man, Walt Disney, used to use way back in the day. So when they used to do it by hand, they used to draw all the main poses, the storytelling poses, and then they used to hand in these uh, drawings to assistants that basically would fill in what goes on from one storytelling pose to another in the best way possible, and they'll review it and go back and forth until it's smooth as possible. Now, what Maya does, which is a piece of software, when you ask it for an in-between two storytelling poses, is that it finds the shortest way to get from point A to point B, and it gives it to you. And the more frames and the more distance you have between the two, the more linear and the more horrible the animation is. And this is, I think, what AI is trying to do in a very clever way, but I think what's missing is the human touch. Because just like an in-betweener, a human in-betweener used to do a really amazing job of getting those two storytelling poses together. As soon as Maya took over, one of the things, first things that 2D animators found was the fact that in 3D, you can only have so many frames before things start to fall apart. You need to have many poses in between in order to actually get those animations to look good. But if you have 10 poses in between, what happens in between them is super linear and horrible. And I think this is basically where AI is at the moment. And I'm not too sure how they're going to go above this because even Maya is not a much better in between now than it was when you first started. So this is what I'm saying about AI. I think the human element, yet again, is missing from this um, creation of animation. And I think that animation is such a medium that requires human intervention that feels odd when there is none. Now, AI is a great tool and a great partner for you to have as a, almost like a personal PA. And so is a supplement that I've been having as of late to really make me sharper and manage to do more with my day, with my tasks. And that is the sponsor of this video, which is Magic Mind. I reached out to them after trying it out and I loved it. So this is Magic Mind, as you can see here, and it's a really tiny bottle that you take once a day. Now, Magic Mind, in their own words, are a mental performance shot. And I was curious because to me, if I can actually do more with my time and do it with less distractions, the better. So to start, when I first received them, I tried their seven day challenge. I felt more zen than ever. I felt more focused than ever. And at 6 p.m. I was still hyped. I was genuinely happy. And this is when I contacted Magic Mind to hopefully share with you all as a sponsor, because I think that for anybody that is looking to do a little bit more, to be a bit more productive, do a little bit more with their lives, have a clear mind, especially in this world that is incredibly stressful at the moment, I think Magic Mind is a really, really cool supplement to have. Now, you can get a full 100% refund up to 100 days because they are so confident in their products. It's completely risk-free. If you do try it, leave a link down below and let me know how you feel after their seven day trial because uh, both my wife and I are super impressed and I would love to hear what you guys think once you give it a try.
Now that you know how Magic Mind works for your mind, let's go back to AI and talk about the good and the bad. Now, I want to talk here about the uh, Uncanny Valley, because I think this is where we were quite a few years ago, and this is where we're heading now, the more I see AI in animation. And this is what makes me feel like AI is a tool and it's not really a solution. Because 2004, rewind, there was a movie called Polar Express. There was many movies that came before it and many movies that came after it, but Polar Express was very much like The Golden Child, a movie by Robert Zemeckis that basically Robert wanted to make a movie that was all mocap with actors, Tom Hanks and so on. And they basically jumped into suits, they acted things out, right? Spoke out loud, super expensive, like face gear, body gear, everything was captured to the highest standard possible. And then he builds a world around it in 3D called the Polar Express, everything is animated, and you have a really cool movie. Now, the movie was great, the story was great, and the conclusion they got is that it looked awkward. And people didn't know why it looked awkward, they just knew that it did, and they couldn't really put their hand on why it felt weird. Now, the animation community also dissected really heavily this movie because there was something weird about it. And the conclusion that we got is that the humanity of it all, not being stylistic and being like cartoony because the characters were slightly cartoony and stylized but the movement wasn't made it so things didn't really gel right when you have something stylized but it doesn't move in a stylized manner it feels odd when you have something realistic that moves in a stylized sometimes it feels odd but sometimes it feels right so this is what i mean about the human touch on top of everything else even when you have motion capture you need animators you need the human touch to basically get the animations to look as stylized as the look of the movie is which is something that didn't happen in that movie so much so all of that to say that animation is one of those mediums that is easy for anybody to see when it doesn't really look right we all know as animators and anybody that is not an animator will actually have seen this before that when you see a walk cycle somebody walking right in an animation from a young animator that doesn't really know much about animation, that is still learning. When you see that walk cycle, you don't have to be an animator to know that things don't quite look right. You can say like, feels odd. You cannot say maybe what it is, but you can definitely tell that something feels odd. This is the frustration of most animators because then we have to ask, but what do you see that is odd? And then the person doesn't know what is odd or what's weird about it. They just know that it doesn't move quite right. And sometimes when you see animations made by maybe television studios or something like that, when you see the animations, it looks slightly off-putting. And it's because there's a lot of like just tweening between poses and like a lot of like, you know, mechanical movements. And this is something that I think is innate with us humans. When you see something that is supposed to move in a certain way and we don't see it moving in that way, then it kind of messes up with our brains a little bit. And then we want to see it moving correctly because we know what we see how it is. Now, we can basically push animation to be stylized. I mean, you know, Warner Brothers did that very well. The Disney movies did that very well. Pixar does that really well. And also the Spider-Man series with uh, Sony Imageworks. So there's a lot of way and leeways that you can actually play with, but you need principles. And this is why the 12 principles of animation are there to basically guide us towards like what fits with what. Now, I, I believe AI might be able to actually learn how to actually use these rules in specific situations, but I think it's going to take a long time before we get to a point where it feels human, almost, that you see something that you press a button and it feels human. So the last point that I want to make is this. As I was looking through this Coca-Cola ads, Sora AI, and everybody trying to kind of like have a go at animation, AI, and all these other things, is that even if we had one button that we can press and all of a sudden everything is perfect and animating perfectly and you can do everything that you want, just like text, just like images nowadays, would it feel special to us as viewers? Because I'm a big believer that the more we go towards a way and a future where you press one button and everything is done for you, the less humanity we have in the artwork and the arts that we make. If you look back, in time, one of the most prestigious and most like admired times of our like humanity is Renaissance. So like in Italy, there was a period where Michelangelo and, and Leonardo da Vinci and all of them was like basically, 
you know, fighting it out to be the best artist possible. And they did a lot of art and a lot of sculpture and they could do everything and it was amazing. But the one thing that was like the same for everybody is that they spend their lifetimes learning a craft and then perfecting it and then making it. And then if you know that you have a Leonardo da Vinci painting or a Michelangelo statue, you know that you have something that took them an immense amount of time in craft and knowledge to put together so you can then own it. And this is what makes it so pricey, right? So I don't think that if we were to watch, let's say the Coca-Cola ad and it was one button press and then it happens and it was as good as the old ads, I still don't think that we would be, wow, this is such a cool ad because we know that it's made with the AI and there's something about the disqualification of wow, it's amazing when it is AI. And I think I'm not the only one feeling this way. I think a lot of people, people feel this way and I do think AI has its place, but the more we press that button that AI can make all the art ever, the less we actually have that feeling of amazement about any one artwork, doesn't matter what it is. Now, as a final point, I like to watch Wally, -E, the movie from Pixar, every so often because I do think that movie has an amazing message that makes me believe in humanity and makes me think that if we go too far one way, we kind of lose ourselves a little bit. And for all those that have watched the movie, you probably remember that when the crew is inside the ship and everything is done for them, they kind of lose themselves. They are basically like, you know, vegetables that are basically controlled by a computer. And I, I think this is what we think we want. But in reality, that's not what we really want. And I can see more and more people feeling the same way as I do, where I think that AI is an amazing tool, it's a companion. You can make a lot of more work with AI by, you know, brainstorming, getting ideas, or, you know, like maybe finding out a different way of saying something or thinking about something. Great, right? It's like having a PA that is there for you all the time. Amazing. But the more we ask of AI, I think the more we lose our humanity and the more lazy we become, just like the humans in WALL-E. And I do think that that's basically taking it slightly too far. I don't think that's where we're going, but I would love to hear your thoughts about AI and the situation with AI right now in 2025. Where do you think it's going? And do you still feel as scared as one year ago when I started my AI video series? Because that is one of the main things that is in my mind because the more I see of AI, the less scared I become as an artist, because I'm starting to see the limitations of AI and I'm starting to see where it can be useful to me and to others as we move forward in this AI world. So that's all I had for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, hit that subscribe if you haven't so far. Only about 10% of people are subscribed to the channel that watch these videos. So please make sure that you subscribe so you help me a ton. Also hit the like so more people can see this content. And as always, stay well, stay safe, peace.